Over the past 30 years, I've been devoting my life to animal rescues in the south of England. If this roof collapses, we're both going to be in mighty big trouble. <coughs> Never has British wildlife been more under threat. Run, Alex. He's going to slip. People and animals are increasingly coming into conflict. This is within a mile of the M25. Ah, oh, stress. Oh, it was close. <laughs> After 16 years of Wildlife SOS on the television, this is our first ever series of Wildlife SOS online. In this episode of Wildlife SOS, we catch up with our first badger cub, who's got an upset stomach. He's getting the full works today. And we have a final attempt to get hold of the deer that's stranded in the car park. The orphan season is fully upon us now, and Lucy's first patient of the day is a fox cub. He's just come in with this great big wound on his neck. I would guess it's possibly a dog, but it's unusual that we don't have anything on the other side, because <laughs> unless the dog has just taken that chunk, there's no other wounds at all. There's lots of pus and sort of dirt and things like that in the wound. And I'm just trying to get it as clean as possible, which is no easy task, because it's really, really nasty. Lucy, anyone would think you're busy today? Oh, my favourite, oh, though. Baby. Tree surgeon is cutting down a tree, normal story. Didn't give the mum a chance to come no. and get her, because no. they normally have two sets, don't they? Uh, two sets, two trays. Two trays. And this is only the beginning of orphan season. Basically, this time of year, it's absolutely manic. I mean, poor old Lucy was on her feet for 11 and a half hours yesterday. I know she needs the exercise, but I mean, apart from that, she rolls her eyes at me as well an awful lot this time of year. It's manic. I mean, we are on the go, literally 24 seven. Lucy's on her feet and doing things 11, 12 hours a day. And she has to come out at night if there's a call out. So this is what we call silly season or orphan season. It's busy. Yeah. Um, so he's just waking up from the anaesthetic now. Um, the noises that he's making is, is just, he's not really fully aware of where he is and what's going on at the moment. He's, it's not necessarily that he's in pain. Just spraying a little bit of wound treatment with insecticide around the outside just in case I've missed one fly egg. And that's pretty much all we can do for him. So we'll get you into the incubator and let you wake up properly. Last time on Wildlife SOS, we were called out to rescue a male deer that was stranded in an office car park. Despite our best efforts, he managed to evade us at every turn. And we now have one last chance to catch him before he gets loose onto a fast and busy road. Right, Lucy, come in. Okay, it's a bleeding hoof. I'm just putting some pressure on it, seeing if I can stop the bleeding. He's cut one of his hoofs, and if I put pressure on it for a couple of minutes, it may well stop. All right. Ah, ah. Right. He's, he's grazed that one as well right. now. He's worried about his stress levels. We'll have to knock him out, Simon. I can't hold this and have him okay. kick knock at the same out. time. Knock him out. Like any rescue, they're never that easy, and you never know what you're gonna get. The blood you see and the cut on his hoof is not horrendous, but what we do now need to do is minimise his stress levels, because he's very, very, very fraught, as you can see. And these antlers are very sharp, which is why you should really wear gloves and keep them protected. So we're going to knock him out with a drug. Give him 0.75. He's feisty, I'm going to go for a mil. Okay. Should take effect in the next five or 10 minutes. In the meantime, we've just got to keep him under control so that he goes to sleep. With road deer particularly, the stress of a situation can actually kill them, either heart attack or they get what's called capture myopathy, which means they never stand again. So it's imperative to get him unconscious as quick as we can so he's de-stressed and then getting conscious again quickly as soon as we find a release site. Good boy. Time is now of the essence. We don't know the area, had to try to work out where he would have come from. Finding a close, suitable site is vital so that we don't have to keep him sedated for too long. We're 
we were lucky enough to spot that the fence panel was loose. So we've got perfect bit of woodland to release him and it's just round the back of where we actually captured him from. You should always release them within 1,000 metres of where they were found because he's going to know the whole of this area. If we took him much further, then he's going to have to start again, which is not the right thing to do for a deer. So we're going to take him round the back of this all overgrown wooded area and release him here. But first of all, we've got to give him the reversal to the sedation that we gave him earlier. So we'll get him all in place, give him this, and then the clock starts ticking and he'll go free. So that was how quickly they reversed from the sedation. I just want to get it in a good place though it's going away from us. Alright, off you go. Well it's brilliant because he's melted well and truly into the undergrowth. He's got acres and acres he can go up here and by tonight he'll sort himself out and he's probably on his home territory, to be honest, we can never be sure, but it's very near to where we rescued him from. After spending the entire weekend in the car park, the deer is finally back to the wild. Back at the centre, it's been a worrying few days for our first little badger cub. Lucy and I have been up at all hours of the night trying to get him to feed, which so far has been painfully slow and not very successful. Emily, some of the volunteers have said that he's had some horrible diarrhea this morning, really quite worried about him. He's still not eating as well as we'd like either. If you think in the wild, he's having mum's milk and sort of bits and pieces that she brings for him to eat, and we've put him on a complete puppy food and milk, it's gonna upset his tummy, so I don't think that's helping. First of all, I'm gonna worm him, and this is something that we would do anyway, routinely but this is just in case he's got any worms. Because of course in the wild, when they eat earthworms, that's a, a source of them getting those parasites. So I'm really sorry. Oh, you like it. That's good. It is strawberry flavor. <laughs> it's your first strawberries. And he's getting the full works today because I'm gonna give him this probiotic. So it's like a friendly bacteria and it's also some kaolin to settle his tummy and stop that diarrhea while his body adjusts to the different food. Oh, you're very brave, aren't you? Just let him munch on that for a second. You finished? Now I'm gonna do something horrible to him, which is a quick injection. And this is just a multivitamin. It does sting a little bit, so just be ready, Emily, if he does. Brave boy. And then finally, this is a brand new donation of um, something called Puppy Stim that we were given from uh, Mill Pledge. And basically what this is, is it stimulates any sort of failing puppies. It's multivitamins, it's a bit of a boost. So hopefully this will just give him a perk up. Oh, he doesn't like that one. <laughs> That's not so good. So what I'm going to do now is pop him back and give him probably about half an hour to settle after us messing him about and then we'll try him with some food again. Okay, and hopefully uh, no more diarrhoea. Hopefully, once the badger's stomach has settled, he will finally begin to eat properly and start gaining weight. Coming up in the next episode of Wildlife SOS, our baby badger starts making a mess. You've got poo on your head. And a Canada goose gets its own back on Lucy. Even though I'm covered in poo, it was still worth it to beat you on that rescue. Lucy was supposed to be doing the intro to this piece, but she's bottled it in corpse. So I've got to say, hey guys. <laughs>